Here's a question for our governing bodies. Do we have politicians, terrorists, or, as I stated before, governing bodies? When I was growing up, um, there was mayors, governors, senators, and congressmen, all that other stuff. That's what we had. That's what I heard mentioned on the news quite often. And I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Didn't care. All I want to know is no matter how hot it got or how cool it got, was it going to rain or snow so much that we didn't go to school? And no amount of rain would keep you out of school. But one could always hope because school sucked. So in seeing all of this, I would hear certain phrases. I would hear phrases such as, We don't have governing bodies. We have politicians and the politicians do not want to cooperate with the governing bodies. And I would hear governing bodies are stalwarting the politicians. I would hear all this stuff. I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And I think that's just part of the plan because I don't even think even though I was 10 and 12 and 14, 16 18, I don't even think those who were 25, 30, 35, and 50, I don't even think they knew what they were talking about. So, I want to ask you, the listeners, the viewers, I want to ask, do you know what's happening in the country? Do you know what your representatives, if you have any, what they're doing? Are they terrorists? Because I can easily come up with things that would say that they are. For example, let's let's just keep this on the surface. See, if you go too deep, you corrupt yourself. So you have to stay on the surface. And that's a good place to be when it comes to um, the government and the issues and policies thereof. So um, should... Uh, gays, lesbians, transgender, yada, yada. Should they all have equal rights that straight people have? Yes, because they're people. That's to me, it's on the surface. Should we all be allowed a livable wage? Because if you want to live comfortably and earn the wage to do so, to keep up with all of the inflation and price hikes and price gouging, shouldn't you be allowed Shouldn't you be rendered, gifted, handed over like a silver spoon, the paycheck to help you do such things so you can spend all your money on frivolous knickknacks, things, bills, important things like that, and medical assistance, care, nursing, things like that, car payments. Shouldn't all these things be done? Shouldn't the Internet at least be free, paid by the taxpayers? And such like that. I mean, we all use it. So it's things like that. On the surface, I think, yeah, LGBTQA rights should be not a right. It should just be. There should never been anything against it. They get married, they get married, they get divorced, they get divorced. I mean, don't straight people get married and divorced all the time. I mean, you don't want the LGBTQA community to destroy the sanctity of marriage. You know, that thing that's already been destroyed since its inception in Europe. Shouldn't we all be able to have an easy living wage? I mean, you work 40 hours a week, sometimes 60, sometimes 80 hours a week, and you can't make it while the government work two days. They're off for four. Then they'll take a two month hiatus so they can think about what they want to do. Then they come back for two days, maybe a week or two or three. Then they're gone for another two weeks. Doesn't seem all that right, does it? You know, comparative reasoning here. Compare and contrast. You compare your life to theirs. Are they, as equal human beings, supposed to have a life so cushioned that they can talk trash about yours? I mean, are they terrorists? Are they that? Because... Shouldn't you get those simple things in life that you want, that you need, that you deserve, just as a living, human, breathing, sentient being of this planet? 
And at the same time, what do they do? Of course, they would not mind gays in the military. Oh, that's that's fine. So long as you can get a budget to support the military. So long as you can get a budget to help the oil companies. I mean, should you get a livable wage? Well, sure. So long as we take away your health care plans and raise your taxes and allow companies to send more jobs overseas, which decreases the amount of jobs that all of us have over here. That's obvious, right? See, that's, to me, terrorism. They hold the country at hostage. See, if you go on the surface and you just say, hey, um, this bridge is condemned, it's bad. So since this bridge is so messed up, we're going to need $60 million to repair it. And they say, wow, the bridge is in need of repair. I wish we had known this sooner. You know what? Send the bill in, repair it, get it done. No, that's not what happens. Why is it hostage? Why is it a terrorism? Because in order for that bridge to get what it needs to be fixed so that you and I can drive across that bridge and not collapse into the river, the sea, or the land some 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet below, they'll say, you want that bridge, then you'll have to give me lower taxes for these corporations. You'll have to give me lower taxes for this business, lower taxes for me. You'll have to do these loopholes, these earmarks. That's what they will say. So that's what it takes for a politician. And that's why I divide things as politicians or governing body or governing entities or something thereof. Because politicians, to me, are no different than terrorists. You can throw on a suit. You can have on your southern accent. You can talk as the way you want to talk to get your opponent across to make sure the people are listening to you and not those others out there. But that's what is going on. And do we fall for it? Yes. We're in the streets. We're in our homes. We're in our cars. We're hating the Mexicans that are taking jobs that nobody want. We're hating the black people because they're not white. We're hating the white people because they're hating the black people. And then you got the white people that hate the white people for hating the black people and the black people for hating everybody. You got the Asians who hate everybody. It seems that no one in this country likes anyone unless that person agrees with you. You got the religious that hates anyone that's not religious or not in their religion. So Christians don't like Muslims. They don't like Buddhists. They don't like uh, anything that's not Christian. They don't like the, the Baptist or whatnot. And the Baptists don't like anybody. So everyone hates everyone. And while that goes on, while no one thinks about who's hating who because they're enjoying the tribalism of being a part of a group that hates another group for some self-righteous reason that's full of shit in the first place. What they don't care to acknowledge is your government is just using it. They're using it to protect themselves and all the crap that they do. So that's why when you turn on the TV and all of a sudden you just hear that headline of something saying taxes plan to go up on the middle class by three or four or five or six percent. And you're like, what the fuck? Where's this coming from? I don't understand. And then you'll hear taxes are in a downfall. You'll hear the stock market is in a free fall. The stock market is doing great. You'll hear about Congress going on leave. You'll hear about all this stuff. You'll hear about the, the missile crisis. You'll hear about a lost submarine uh, and an American died. So that's the that's the really <laughs> egregious part that in a Trump debacle in the thing that everyone said that he should not do and American died. I would think that pales in comparison to the millions of Americans that are going to die here because of the other decisions that not he, but yet he, his cabinet and his ilk in the Republican and democratic party are doing. So I would suggest that the first thing we do is stop hating each other. That's the first thing. Stop hating each other because while you are hating the person next to you, that person next to you just might be the one that happens to be the one that saves your life. That person might be the one you need to call or ask for a ride 
That person might be the one if your daughter falls or your son falls, they get hurt and they have the cell phone and they say, you just called me a racial slur a second ago, especially wearing a shirt with a racial slur. Your child can suffer or they might be magnanimous and they say, I will help your child. You can die, but your child is innocent. And you got those that just might see the ugly future before them. Why save the child when you're just going to teach your child to grow up just as vile as you are? That that kid can fucking go. Send them to the God you love and have at it. I mean, things like this can happen. And when they do, the person won't think, damn, I was a racist, bigoted asshole. They will think this person just allowed my kid to possibly die or to die. And now I hate him her and their race or religious sect or something even more that's what's going to happen so if we can stop the hate we can start the healing and if we can get our heads out of our asses and just realize that there's no such thing as a good or honest politician because once you're a politician you are already in the pockets of everyone who has money so either you are wealthy or you're not a donor so in that light, the best thing to do is to find anything that's going to get rid of these career politicians and put in people that might be of the LGBTQ community that would do not just for them, but for us, a person that understands the people. You know, if you base your next leader, if they are a wealthy famous person which we've had reagan and now trump if you base your needs on well it's female and we as a as women need to rise up together then you will get those who are like hillary or the failings of elizabeth warren if you place them within the third parties you will get people who will run a good candidate predominantly a better one than the first two parties which is really one corporate party you'll get them like a jill stein and whatnot but they're only around when it's an election time which is the problem you don't know who to vote for so when you get a better quality of people running for office then you get a better quality of people that you can vote for you just have to get the nastiness out of the parties or start a party and not this thing that we have now i'll touch on that differently but we need to work together to stop the hate if you see someone and they are someone of a different race or something and they smile and give you that reverse head nod or a wave it's okay to wave back get that head nod back let them know it's okay and if they look at you and give you that that sideways look, that 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 look, that sound, that gesture, they gesticulate that they don't like you. You know what you do? I say, yeah, walk on, of course. But you look at them and you just shake your head, show pity, because that's what they are. They give them the pity because they're pitiful. That's what I suggest. I mean, you ain't got to go over there and say, oh, what's this all about? What you give me that sideways look for? No, you ain't got to do that. Just shake your head, let them know. That you look down on them and just keep walking because there's better things for you to do than to dwell on that moment with them when all they're going to do is try to incite you to come over there and start a fight. It's almost like that. I don't know how this country is. I don't know. You can just, just, just think about it. Just, you know, sarcastically I'm talking, but you know, you got the white dude that lost his job. Something went happen. Something, something else went awry. He's a black kid, black guy on the street. Oh, he's throwing out. Racial slurs left and right. No one's going to stop him. So black dude knocks him the fuck out. Black dude goes to prison. I don't find that right. I find that. That's how I grew up. When you're old enough to talk shit, you're old enough to get your ass kicked. If you don't want to get fucked up, don't talk shit. It was simple for me. But hey, I've been going on this. It's damn near about 15, no, almost 16 minutes. I'm going to do some editing, probably drop it down to about 15 and a half, maybe 15 if I'm lucky. But I want to 
Thank you for listening. If you listen to this far and um, please let's stop the hate. Let's let's get better people into politics. Don't don't vote for the money. Don't vote for the people. Vote for yourself because you are a people. And I think that if all of you can do that, it won't take long. Just maybe a year or two. If we can just change it like that, just a year or two. And you'll see a difference. Get the career politicians out. Get them out. That's all I got to say. This is Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.